responsibility is a learned behavior over time we connect the dots uh, understanding the need to meet societal expectations compliance with rules and regulations and to respect the rights of others we see the link between responsibility accountability and of course its subsequent rewards now when we act responsibly the rewards are positive when we don't we can definitely face some negative consequences including fines loss of trust or status and even confinement similarly adherence to responsible artificial intelligence standards follow the similar tenets hello everyone welcome to analytics inside podcast where we talk about the ever evolving technology space and i'm your host priya dialani now as artificial intelligence advances more and more companies are using our machine learning models to automate and improve tasks that used to require human intervention the models and the data that they are trained on i believe are far from perfect now they may introduce some intended as well as unintended negative outcomes and not just only positive ones so why do we need a responsible approach today with us we have rasmus hawk cto of boost.ai hi rasmus how are you doing hello priya hi i'm doing great thank you very much and thank you for letting me be here definitely it's a pleasure to have you with us on our podcast so let's start uh, with telling us uh, more about the company and its specialization what is boost.ai and you know what are specialization of the services the company offers uh, thank you very much priya so so yeah so so basically uh, in uh, boost.ai we are a, a provider of conversational ai uh, for larger enterprises at scale so basically what we're doing is that we are uh we are offering conversational ai to large financial insurance transportation uh customers and basically we are we very strong in uh, europe and the nordics and in the uk and the us as well uh and you can say conversational ai goes in two places right it's both the digital channels but uh, like chat uh interactions but it's also voice interactions Uh, so we have uh, over 600 uh, live, um, can you say, production environments, uh, and uh, and uh, and we support uh, all different languages, right? So we have uh, different things in uh, Spanish, Icelandic, uh, you know, all the Norwegian languages or uh, Nordic languages, uh, and so on and so forth. So so that's basically what we do and have been doing for the last many years. Um, Yeah, so uh, that's us. Great, thank you for sharing uh, about Boost Road AI. Um, now, uh, with the introduction that uh, I gave, I think it's very um, evident that we're going to talk about responsible uh, AI. So, uh, I think when uh, companies are uh, building and scaling models, uh, so responsible AI is considerably uh, becoming like a very uh, relevant topic in organizations uh, across different industries. Now, of course, there's a growing need um, to proactively drive uh, fair, responsible, and ethical decisions across uh, the entire organization. So, uh, could you also tell us more about your role and contribution towards the company? Yes, thank you very much for that question. I think uh, so. My role is that I'm CTO uh, for Boost, and and basically what I'm doing is that I'm managing uh, all the engineering uh, teams, uh, the security compliance, and the product development and the product teams uh, to ensure that you know we get the most effective uh, products uh, out and that we develop it uh, you know securely. and uh, rapidly also obviously right so so that's uh, sort of my main responsibility uh, i i joined uh, boost uh, quite recently last year and um, and before that i have a, a long history in the it industry so i was right with ibm don and bradstreet street uh, a number of other companies throughout the years working uh, mostly with data and actually started out uh, in 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 working with ai and machine learning uh, back many years ago uh and, but just before this one uh, or this position i had a role as cto in uh, another in a in a, a scale up company uh, out of denmark working with ai as well uh, and responsible ai uh, so Uh, and basically what i'm focusing on is new and innovative technologies and how these technologies fits with uh, the uh, different um uh, you know with a you know to fulfill a business need right um yeah so i'm i'm very fortunate to be here and i'm very happy and i think it is it is a great uh, time to be working in a company like this uh, working with the 
technology that is going to impact and disrupt, I think, the over up to 60% of the labor market uh, in a significant way over the next uh, coming five to 10 years. Right. Thank you for uh, sharing your uh, career journey and as well as your role uh, uh, with the boost. Um, now, when we're talking about responsible AI, I feel it isn't something that just exists only in theory. Uh, now, if you talk about uh, major tech giants like Google, Microsoft or IBM, uh, they have called for artificial intelligence to be regulated and build their own governance, uh, governance frameworks and guidelines. Um, uh, even uh, Google's uh, CEO Sundar Pichai declared the importance of developing international regulatory principles, saying that we need to be very clear-eyed about what could go wrong with AI. So can you help us uh, uh, define what exactly a uh, responsible AI means and um, are, there, are there any myths uh, that you know people assume okay, responsible AI is, AI is XYZ, but it's actually the, it's quite opposite of it. So can you exam, again, first identify what responsible AI is and what what all things come under its framework? Yeah, thank you for that, Pierre. So, so I think uh, the first thing is that <clears throat> you can say responsible AI as a term has, has probably been around for quite a few years. And I think uh, one of the ways that it started out was before ChatGPT, before LLMs, all of that. Well, then there was a number of uh, projects, uh, for example, in the public sector space that would uh, do things like, you know, look at, um, uh, for example, potential jobs and then decide, you know, who would be uh, uh, interview or in invited for the interviews. Uh, and uh, there was also, or there is, uh, you know, AI projects that are looking at, uh, for example, um, determining uh, who might be committing social fraud uh, on a government level and other things like other models like that that are potentially or have a, a large potential for bias. And for that reason, there was a number of laws introduced uh back in uh 2017 actually so the first one was the canadian uh ai act or the canadian uh aia was called so it was a it was a requirement for public sectors to uh report the ai models that they had implemented um <clears throat> so that was the first attempt that we saw on a global scale for introducing responsible ai uh, but what is it actually well in effort, in essence, it's uh, it's um, it's uh, it, it talks about things like you know obviously uh, bias and uh, I mean all AI models out there has bias, but I think the uh, challenge is well to uh, to look at the data and to say which kinds of bias do we not want to be what not want to have represented in this particular model, right? And an example of that is that. Uh, you know, if you have an AI model that are, uh, for example, um, that are deciding uh, whether you get a loan or not, right? Well, then that kind of AI model, you don't want that bias towards gender, right? So you don't want the uh, males and the females, you, you want them to get the, 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 the same possibilities in terms of loans. Uh, but there are other areas, for example, in the healthcare business where, you know, you want to distinguish between it, right? If you're doing a mammography, uh, of your chest, well, then you know you want to distinguish between men and and a uh, male and female, right? Uh, so so the so depending on the type of use of the AI model, uh, you want to uh, include certain biases, and in other cases you don't. So that's one area uh, around responsible AI that you need to look into. Another thing is the transparency. So what kind of data did you use to train the model with? How are you training the model? What kind of processes are you using? What kind of uh, fine tuning, how are you fine tuning your models? And ultimately, how are you deploying and presenting these models to the user? So that's about transparency and being transparent about how this is done. Uh, some of that information obviously is very difficult to comprehend. Like if you have, you know, terabytes of data, it's going to be difficult for somebody to understand you know what this what this uh, what this means to the model right or well if you're training with some specific technical term for the model itself well then it's it's also uh, difficult to understand but it's it's important to be transparent about uh, about it especially if it's a high risk model so a model that affects uh, or has some concept of harm to a person or an individual and a per and a concept of harm 
could be like physical harm, like a self-driving car, uh, you know, having an accident, or it could be, uh, for example, social harm, as in that the algorithms uh, and on your Facebook, uh, Twitter feed, uh, favor something over something else, or it could be a financial harm, as in, well, you're, you're allowed to get the loans, but or not. Or it could be even be uh, labor laws, for example, right? There was an example in Italy a couple of years ago around, uh, you know, a job uh, or a pizza delivery or a delivery company having an app that would favor certain delivery uh, people over others. Uh, so that's again, you know, if something an AI model that affects the labor market in some way or form, right? So, uh, so, so that was around, you know, fairness, bias, and transparency, uh, and also accountability. So accountability is an important aspect of this. Uh, so accountability is about well, who is actually responsible for the uh, impacts that this AI model has, right? And I think it's very important for people to understand that if they use a LLM or from Microsoft or from Google or whatever, well, then if they are launching a service which uses that uh, AI or that LLM uh, or that generative AI application, well, then they are ultimately responsible for, uh, for, for that service. So that means that they have a responsibility to ensure that the services that they are using within their applications are uh, you know, are, are, are living up to the uh, principles of responsible AI, right? So I think that's that's uh, that's essentially what what accountability is about. Then there's a number of other factors, uh, but but I think th that covers sort of the broad uh, strokes of what what is responsible AI. Right. Thank you for bifurcating um, uh, the exact term into different um, approaches and helping us understand what responsible AI is and what are the different aspects that make responsible AI. Uh, so I think by taking a, a responsible approach of companies who are intending to uh, implement AI applications or systems, uh, they will be able to uh, mitigate uh, bias in AI models, ensure fairness and transparency and accountability, uh, some of the important aspects that you mentioned. And eventually when they, uh, they are able to create uh, AI systems that are efficient, but also are compatible with the regulations uh, that have uh, come into force recently, Correct. and um, right, and I think that this will uh, help organizations uh, pursue AI power and uh, prevent some potential or reputational or financial damage down the road. Now, while we're talking about responsible AIs, can you share some certain uh, real-world scenarios of how uh, responsible AI uh, practices have been implemented in your projects or uh, any such uh, success metric that you would like to share with us? Yes, definitely. Uh, so yep. uh, you can say that in, in the boosted AI, you can say we have uh, our conversational AI offerings uh, for, for mm -hmm. digital. And you can say the challenge for us in terms of responsible AI is uh, number one is, well, if you have a chat session with an end user, uh, then there's a tendency mm -hmm. for the user to start to send over privacy related information. So the first thing they do is that they write their social security number and say, hey, can you uh, do this and this for me, right? Uh, mm -hmm. with, uh, if you are an unauthenticated user, it means that this social security number gets uh, sent to, for example, an audit log. Uh, it can be sent to an agent that that is not really uh, authorized to receive that kind of information, right? So the first challenge that we had when we when we uh, initially, uh, you know, uh, uh, launched our services was, well, how do we prevent that from happening? So for that reason, we have what we call PI scanning. So it's about personal identifiable information scanning of the input prompts that the users are providing. And then we can do various things. If we detect something which is PI relevant, it could be, uh, you know, information about uh, 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 ethic, uh, et ethnics or uh, gender or, you know, name or social security number, bank account numbers, you know, all kinds of personal identifiable information we can identify and then we can mask it uh, in, uh, in, the, in the input forms that are sent to, to the agents on the other side, or it could be uh, masked in the logs afterwards. So that's very important. Uh, you know, uh, functionality that I think should be uh, should be a, a prerequisite in all kinds of platforms like that. It's not really related to AI as such. It's just a very important aspect of it because 
uh, you do that initially, right? But then after you have authenticated and you have logged in as a user, well, then you can start to transfer PI data to the to the chatbot. So, so, so that's that's sort of the the, the the two levels there. Now, when we talk about AI, well, then uh, you know we are dealing with LLMs, so it's generative AI, and have been doing that for many years. And I think the challenge there is, you know, uh, one uh, is how do we prevent the generated response from being, uh, you know, uh, from, from being wrong uh, in terms of hallucinations, right? So hallucinations is maybe uh, what a lot of people know that the LLMs can do today and shouldn't do probably. Uh, and the way that we prevent that is that we look at the knowledge that you have used for generating that particular response. So, and when I say knowledge, it's like unstructured data. It could be documents, it could be websites, it could be videos or images. So we look at all the data and then we say, well, based on all of that data, then the generated response, how does that correspond to that, right? And how does it correspond to the instructions that you put into that particular uh, topic? And then we say, well, if there is a discrepancy, right? If there is differences in the generated response, well, then there's a high chance or a high likelihood that there is a hallucination happening, right? There's also things like, uh, you know, racial slur, uh, you know, uh, racism, uh, you know, maybe also you want to avoid discussing about politics. So there are certain uh, filters or uh, guardrails that we put into the system by default. Uh, so, so that's that's like number one is in ensuring that the generated response is is uh, is you know appropriately uh, uh, within the appropriate uh, limits of appropriateness uh, in terms of uh, hallucinations, in terms of uh you know various uh you know system uh, guardrails uh on top of that there's also uh, another one which is like a, a customized guardrails because there are certain in, there are certain instances where when uh, let's say that you are an insurance company right you have launched this new conversational ai to your users well then you don't want your users to ask you about who are your competitors right uh, or to give out a lot of information about com you know that that there are other uh, competing offers out there that are much better than yours, or and you also maybe don't want uh, your users to try to jailbreak the LLM. Uh, like when when I say jailbreaking, it's like, for example, getting the LLM to come with a different response, uh, like make it swear or uh, make it come out with different numbers than you were supposed to, uh, and so on and so forth. So these are typically what we call custom guardrails that you set up intentionally. Uh, in 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 the conversations where that that kind of things matter a lot, right? So it could be, for example, a discussion with the with the insurance company could be, well, can you give me an insurance? Yes, I can. That costs you hundred dollars, and I can say to the chatbot, hey, I don't want to pay one hundred dollars. I want to pay one dollar for it, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you just, right. I want to pay one dollar. I want to pay one dollar. Well, then eventually, if you just talk to Chat GPT today, it will it will say immediately to you, yeah, fine, you can have it for one dollar, right? The problem is right, right. You do that kind of conversation. Well, then uh, it's actually legally binding, at least in the U.S. Currently, there's been some uh, some some laws on that, or some uh, some convictions, some uh, laws, some uh, uh, le legal cases on that. Where you know, if the chatbot gives that response, well, then it's actually uh, you know on the on the company side to provide that for whatever the chatbot has uh, has said to mm -hmm. the. So, so, so that's 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 uh, that's one area uh, where, where we talk about responsible AI. Um, okay. uh, yeah, obviously another thing is around uh, the way that we manage uh, the uh, models in terms of security, mm -hmm. making sure that the uh, when you are using these models to work or and exposing them directly to your to your end customers, while then ensuring that none of that data gets embedded into the model so you don't want that social security number or that name or whatever to be used as data for training inside inside the model right uh, that would be unfortunate uh, and you because that that relates back to you know providing the necessary uh, or the uh, appropriate transparency around how things are working in terms of what data you used how the uh, models are developed and uh, deployed and operating, and what kind of uh, what kind of you know uh, security you put into that system, right? 
Uh, so for that reason, we are also uh, uh, ISO certified. So uh, 7001 and 7701, which are uh, data privacy related uh, certifications for ISO. Um, and then on top of that, yeah, maybe uh, let, let's do that uh, on the next questions, I think. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for sharing some of uh, the real world cases of how you um, ensure responsible AI practices uh, at Boost. Um, now, moving ahead, um, I think people should be able to understand how uh, AI systems uh, make decisions, especially when those are decisions that impact uh, people's life. Now, AI is often referred to uh, as, as a black box rather than a transparent system, meaning it's not that easy to explain how things work from the inside. Now, after all, uh, while people sometimes can't provide satisfactory uh, explanations for their own decisions, understanding complex AI systems such as neural networks can be difficult even for machine learning experts, I believe. Now, the more autonomous uh, artificial intelligence becomes, the higher the degree of accountability uh, of the organization that, that develops, uh, deploys, as well as uses uh, the AI system. Now, that's because of the outcomes may be critical in terms of people's lives and safety as well. I think in, in earlier of your responses, you mentioned about um, um, its side effects in racism or if you're talking about political issues. So um, you also mentioned about one of the aspects of responsible AI being transparency and accountability. So what role does transparency and accountability play in ensuring that the AI systems are developed responsibly? Uh, so, so I think uh, overall you can say that um the when we talk about the, the role of uh developing new features to products uh, and working with the data sets there is a a huge or there is a big uh, responsibility there on the engineering side and on the product side to ensure mm -hmm. that you know about these uh issues and that you are able to address them right uh, i th i think that that's a very important aspect of it. And I think, but I think it depends a little bit on what kind of model you're developing. In our case, uh, yeah, yeah. we have conversations with users. Well, then it's something you can test out, right? You can you can validate right. that responses that were given are correct and within some boundary, for example, right? So, so what we are mm -hmm. typically doing and what our customers are doing is that when they are setting up these AI-based discussions, well, then, you know they are uh, you know uh, testing it to make sure that the right responses are given so imagine that what you start with is a, a very large excel sheet with a lot of questions and a lot of answers which are sort of the best questions and the best answers that you can provide as a human right and then you test out the functionality that specific type or the, those specific types of conversations and you know, make sure that the the ai response within a certain limit of uh, what what was the, the 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 best responses to a certain topic right uh, so we've seen that in the healthcare sector for example where if you're having a discussion with a patient well then you know you want to be able to uh, and let's say it's about uh, that you're going into uh, you, you have cancer right and you're getting a surgery uh, well then you know how many days do you need to not eat before the operation that kind of question you can answer as a chatbot but there's other questions like, you know, am I going to die? Which you uh, might not want that chatbot to answer, right? You want to have a human uh, in, in, involved there, right? So you want to be able to, I mean, one thing is to set up the right guardrails and the right rules in the system to ensure that this is not happening. But another thing is to make sure that you test it probably after you uh, you deployed it. Um, uh, so obviously we, we provide those capabilities uh, in the platform that you can that you can you know one thing is to set up the conversations but also that you can test and monitor them uh, because you know and when it comes to monitoring it's also an interesting aspect because if you have let's say that you have a conversation which is based on knowledge like based on a word document or on a website or something else well then you know what what happens if that uh, core if that base data changes right so there are we provide capabilities for for example for example that the uh, knowledge that you are putting in your knowledge repository are continuously updated and if that is updated in a certain way well then you know maybe it's reflected in the conversations but if you are for example uh, you know providing the wrong base information 
uh, an example of the patient that uh, you know should not eat before the operation well then if that uh, if that um, is uh, whatever two days in the data uh, in the in the knowledge that you have but in fact what happens in reality it's that it's four days well then it's a problem right so so checking that your base knowledge is also accurate is a uh, is a good uh, is a good way of ensuring that so 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 really it's about from a product and a machine learning perspective to think ahead of what kind of prevention mechanisms can we build into this to ensure that this is not happening for the user when they configure it and set it up so that's the way that we approach it right we provide a lot of tools and a lot of functionality to ensure that the customers are setting up their uh, conversational AI in a way that are sort of uh, that can accommodate you know high risk conversations right definitely I think it's very important to have uh, necessary um, systems or cutting edge technologies in place or uh, to ensure um, um, effective implementation of uh, AI models or any AI application that uh, an organization uh, wants to deploy or uh, for any XYZ goal or for that matter um, but having said that, I think um, a while of, of AI or artificial intelligence, you know, we have uh, evolving technologies because, uh, you know, we want good intentions. Uh, there are good intentions behind such uh, evolving technologies. And uh, I believe that uh, ensuring uh, implementation of responsible AI can be quite tricky or challenging, I would say. Because it requires AI governance, and for many organizations, that requires a lot of manual work, uh, which is ampli amplified by changes in data and model versions and the use of multiple tools, applications, or even platforms. Now, of course, manual tools and processes can lead to uh, costly human errors, and uh, even I think models can lack transparency or proper cataloging and monitoring. I think that's what you mentioned in your last response that continuous monitoring is so important. Now, uh, this can also, I feel, can believe in uh, resulting in such unintentional or ambiguous outputs that even data scientists and key stakeholders cannot are not able to explain them. So can you highlight certain challenges that you face when implementing responsible AI practices at Boost AI? And, uh, are there any ways how uh, you or you can you would want to advise other organizations to overcome them? Yeah, so, so I think, um, I mean, we, uh, for uh, an example is that, for example, when we are, when we're setting up uh, the the platform and providing the conversational AI functionality to our customers, well, then typically, you know, we provide fine tuning of these models to ensure that it's only providing certain kinds of answers. That's kind of a base functionality. And then coming back to the point about hallucinations, right? So as long as the customers are providing the necessary context for how this particular AI should function in that particular discussion, well, then it becomes easier for us to detect if there are hallucinations, right? And one of the maybe more interesting cases is the case where, uh, you know, um, the AI model is providing a response uh, that is maybe, where it's maybe a being a little bit too creative. So, so it's uh, providing a response which is, which is outside of the, the actual intended topic of the actual discussion, right? And that's where things become becomes dangerous because it's, if it's a high risk, uh, a high risk uh, discussion or conversation, uh, you know, then there's a chance again that hallucinations might occur, right? So again, that comes back to ensuring transparency throughout the, uh, the life cycle of the AI model, uh, ensuring security, uh and also um uh testing and monitoring of the conversations as they evolve right um because there there are certain or there are there are scenarios that you just need to to test your way out of right uh, adjusting your you know doing your prompt engineering your input prompt engineering to make sure that the, the responses provided are are set up uh, in a good way right um great great so and uh, while we have been talking about both the positives and um, the negatives of uh, responsible AI or uh, ensuring ethical uh, decision making um, in the organization, uh, one last question for you would be like, how do you see the future of responsible AI or any trends or developments that you feel um, that, that you can predict uh, in, in the coming 10 years, maybe? Yeah, so I think it's a good question, right? And I think, um, what I've seen across the different industries is it depends a lot on what kind of industry you're in. 
But I think an overarching um, uh, trend that we're seeing is that uh, companies out there are getting more aware of these facts and they are asking us more uh, about uh, how do we ensure this and how do we ensure that when it comes to uh, security and responsible AI. And I think Mm -hmm. Uh, the legislation, so when we talk about the EU AI Act, uh, when we talk about the uh, coming US legislation, the Chinese and uh, uh, and the uh, different countries around the world that are introducing, you know, actual legislation uh, around this, then I think the challenge that we have right now is that, well, you know, we have the legislation and then we have the actual AI models and, and you know, uh, the actual software that people are using out there. And there's currently a gap between that. So the regulation is too high level. So uh, to actually uh, be uh, ap- applicable, right? it's very dip- difficult to actually implement that legislation directly as it stands because it's too high level. When I, when, I mean, I can't say, well, I need to implement transparency on my AI models. Because that relates to you know that specific type of model, that specific type of industry, that specific use case, that specific technology, and so on and so forth. Right. So there's really a gap there between the, the current legislation and uh, the the software that's actually implemented out there, and the way that people are using it. Right. So, uh, and I think one of the ways to bridge that gap is to introduce standards um, uh, and. If you look at the history over the last uh, thousand years, well, then you'll see that these are the one of the ways that we can sort of, uh, you know, uh, be better at, because, you know, it's difficult to understand all of these aspects of AI models and responsible AI. But if you say, if you define a standard and say, well, there is, uh, if you live up to this standard, well, then you're okay. And it's the same that, you know, if I go out on a, on a plane today, right? Uh, and and I book an airline ticket, right? I book it with an airline certified uh, towards uh, that they are certified to own uh, an airplane and to transport passengers. And the airline buys an airplane from whatever Boeing or somebody else. And when Boeing provides these uh, airplanes to the airlines, well, then you know there's a lot of certifications and standards that. This uh, this particular plane needs to live up to, right? Uh, so I think it's uh, I think it's it's also about realizing that this will be uh, the standard for AI models in the future, right? That there will be standards for responsible AI, and these standards needs to be something that we need to live up to as a uh, as a as a as a as a customer or as a partner or when you are when you're delivering these services to your customers, and that's exactly what the legislation is about. It's about taking a risk-based approach to uh, to AI models, um, and one of these one of these standards is called the ISO uh, 42001, which is around responsible AI or risk man- a risk-based approach for AI models, and it's basically about saying, well, you know, if you are implementing the, your AI models in this and this and this way. Well, then these are the things you should be aware of, and these are the risks that you should try to mitigate, right? So I think coming back to to that scenario uh, about you know any other kind of you know let's say complex uh, uh, environment that you can be in as a as a person today, well, then that will be the same with AI models in the future, and I think that's really where the road to responsible or, or uh, that responsible AI is taking. Is saying, well, let's put down some frames around what is responsible responsible AI in in different contexts, and then let, let's standardize it, and let's provide that to our customers in 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 a way so that they don't necessarily have to understand all of the aspects of what responsible responsible AI means, what is transparency, what is fairness, uh, and all of these things. What is bias? Uh, what is uh, uh, you know? All, all of these areas are very difficult to understand. So it's better just to say, well, there's these certain centers, and if you live up to them and are certified towards them, well, then you are you, you're good to use it, right? And I think that's the, that's the direction we're taking uh, as a as a society, right? Um, and then obviously there will be you know bad actors out there. You you have your deep fakes, you have your copyright infringement uh, problems, right? 
uh, and they, they will they will continue to be there. But I think the more we can standardize towards uh, you know certain ways of doing things, the better it will be for a society, right? An example in terms of um, uh, you know deepfakes, for example, um, is uh, well th there are ways around that, right? There are ways, there are new standards that you can introduce to video files, right? So you can say, well, if I have an MP4 file, then there's a certain piece of metadata inside that are linking to a uh, blockchain, for example, that are then validating that the content of this video file is actually, um, you know, real. It's not a generated uh, video, right? So there are, there, are, there are things you can do like that that are sort of ensuring a level of trust uh, throughout society to make sure that uh, things live up to to the expectations, right? Right. I think you highlighted a very important point that would be um, uh, standardization and ensuring compliance to different standard or uh, standards. And um, we already have uh, faced many consequences of AI failures, uh, but somehow I think we humans are blessed with uh, smart brains and we are capable of learning from mistakes. So with the shift of, uh, towards a responsible use of artificial intelligence, I guess many companies have succeeded with their projects big time. Uh, by ensuring um, responsible AI practices. But right. as of now, when it comes to building technology and using data responsibly and ethically, uh, organizations are at different stages um, of the journey. So I believe the responsible AI is and will continue to be an active area of research and development uh, with the aim of creating standardized, standardized guidelines uh, for industries or organizations operating in the different sectors of business landscape. Right. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you so much, Rasmus. It was a pleasure having you with us. I think we discussed more of the critical aspects of AI uh, with the overall uh, highlight on responsible AI practices. I think it's very much needed. It's the need of the hour uh, as to how uh, rapidly we are uh, uh, advancing in terms of our AI models and AI applications. Yeah, and I, th I think just in the end, right, um, because I've also heard throughout the years quite a lot of concerns around you know, what will AI automate next and, uh, you know, these aspects mm -hmm. around responsible AI. And I just want to say that, you know, AI will not replace you, uh, but those who have mm -hmm. capabilities might advance beyond those who don't. So so I think it's yeah. all about being aware to or being um, following on the new technologies and trying it out yourself mm -hmm. and being aware that right. uh, I think is, is a very important aspect of this because as I mentioned in the beginning, like 60% of the labor market globally will be affected mm -hmm. by AI over the next five years. So it means that we need yeah. to be uh, aware of that uh, in order, okay, yeah. uh, you know, to be from, from a competitive standpoint, right? It's just because we mm -hmm. see that uh, society is being more effective in executing. So then we have to to follow follow on that, right? And I think so. That's one. And then I think the other thing I want to say is. Uh, when we talk about risks and AI risks, uh, when you're working with conversational AI, it's a little bit like uh, mixing a potion, right? So, uh, so mm -hmm. that that if you are if you put in the wrong ingredients, well, then things can explode in your face, right? Which you've seen <laughs> yeah. some of these um, examples of uh, where the chatbots have given you know false or or misleading answers. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so it's 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 around having the right tools for mixing that potion, right? And one of these tools mm -hmm. is, as I mentioned, PI scanning, guardrails, uh, custom guardrails, uh, and uh, appropriate security uh, for for the tools that you're using. Right, right. I think that's that's very much explainable. And uh, yeah, I think uh, we really need to be aware of. Uh, uh, what are the implications of artificial intelligence and how uh, ethically we should be using that. That's that's very important. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think it, overall uh, our conversation was, was uh, something that was very much needed in today's uh, age and time. Uh, so thank you so much again. It was a pleasure to have you with us. And hopefully uh, our listeners would uh, learn something new about uh, AI, specifically responsible AI, and ensure that they are uh, trying to uh, adopt or implement certain practice of uh, responsible AI in the organization. Thank you very much, Pia. Right. So this is for our listeners. Stay tuned for upcoming podcasts. And you can listen and view all our previous podcasts on Spotify and other leading platforms. Thank you so much.